we're now in Akasuka, which is part of Tokyo. We're on a busy street and we're kind of just hanging out for a moment to see what kind of stuff drives by. The reason being, on our way into Bingo Sports, a yellow Ferrari Daytona Spider drove by us, followed by a McLaren and a couple of Sentries. There's a reason we're seeing these kind of cars around here and that's because there's a lot of stuff that happens in this area and a lot of money flows through it. That's why Bingo Sports is here. If you ever get a chance to stop in there, it's worth a visit to see what they have in stock. They hold a lot of cars that go through auctions and the cars that go in there are incredible. Some of the rarest Ferraris you'll ever see. There's a special edition Lamborghini in there right now, a couple of race cars and even an original Skyline GTR. Next up, we're going to Pagani. Behind Bingo Sports and Pagani is the Hiei Shrine. It's up on top of a hill with a stone wall so it's easy to spot. There's also a massive gate with a pair of lions protecting and guarding it. This is one of the most beautiful places that you can find in central Tokyo to take pictures. However, be ready because there's always tourists around and it can be hard to get an isolated shot with just you and the scenery. But we're gonna go up and check it out and see if we can get a chance to get some really nice pictures. There are a lot of people here at Hiei Shrine and you can see over to one side there are lines of people that are queuing up to buy some placards. These wooden placards are called Emma. On them you write your wish and then you hang that wish over on this side where it stays for a while and the more people that read it the more likely it is to come true. The predominant thing you'll see are mice and rats. The reason is because this is the beginning of the new Chinese New Year which is the year of the rat. Last year was the year of the boar, which was the year I was born in, thus my trip here last year having an Emma with a boar on it, which I hung my wish on. Here we see fortunes. Now these fortunes are written on paper. What you do is you drop a coin into a box, reach in, and get a fortune. You read your fortune and then you hang it on whatever they have available for you to tie it to. Sometimes this is a string, sometimes it's a fence, and sometimes it's a structure like this. Either way, that's where it stays and hopefully your fortune comes true. Down these steps you see a gate. This is the way we're going to be leaving the temple. Now when you leave a temple and when you enter, you're supposed to bow to the god of that temple before leaving or entering the temple. So that's what we're gonna do once we get down to the bottom and leave Hiei Shrine. Our first stop in the Aston Martin Brand Center is the Champagne Room. At least that's what I call it because for obvious reasons, it just fits. We're gonna go from here upstairs to check out what's there and then we're gonna continue on throughout the Brand Center into the dealership where the pre-production DBX is waiting for us. This is the vehicle they used for testing the vehicle throughout the streets of Japan. I knew there was a DBX that was gonna be waiting for us here, but I did not expect to see a Lagonda. If you haven't seen one of these in person, you cannot appreciate just how beautiful these cars are. From my knowledge, given a hard time by a lot of people because it seemed kind of understated and simple and very, very expensive. 
When you look inside, there's a lot of similarities to Aston Martin's other vehicles, specifically the Vanquish. However, when you look at this car in person, the proportions and the lines on this thing are so beautiful. It's got this understated elegance that not too many manufacturers can do these days. This particular car is for sale and it's going for 80 million yen. That's about $800,000 in current exchange rates. This car is a Rapide AMR. It's one of the last Rapides ever built, and I have to say it's a shame because I adore the Rapide. V12 in the front, four doors, and looks that can kill. It's one of the best looking four door cars on the planet. One of the best looking four door cars ever made. This one is a bit more eccentric with all the lime essence detailing to it. However, it still is absolutely gorgeous. It's basically a stretched DB9. On this particular car, you can see that it has these Vanquish Zagato style lights on the front, as well as a full carbon fiber front end to it. There's carbon fiber accents throughout, even a carbon fiber trunk spoiler. This car is awesome, and I would love to have one for myself. This is the Aston Martin DBX prototype that they use to test in Europe and Japan. It may have gone elsewhere, but we know for sure that it's been through those two areas. It looks very similar from the outside to the production vehicle. Obviously, it's got the Welsh Dragon camouflage on it, but inside and outside, there's a lot of carryover parts. They've been kind enough to give us some time with it, so let's take a look at what this vehicle looks like. One of my favorite things to see on the DBX is this grill. I love the big grill that Aston Martin's been using since I think it was the DB24 is when they started bringing in this grill. Absolutely adore it. It's great to see it used this way on an SUV. Oversized grills are starting to become more common, but this one is still a signature style that I think needs to continue for as long as possible. Sitting in the cockpit of the DBX, it is really familiar for the new generation of cars. Um, and I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm kind of trying to take it in as if I was driving this. And quite frankly, it feels like a natural evolution when going from the DB11 to the new Vantage to a DBX. The center console is raised up really high as if you're in a sports car. Underneath it is a big empty space where you can put things like a purse or a small bag or something. And I think they did that one for the practicality of having a storage space down there, but also to make you feel like you're in a no kidding sports car. And closing the door here, it has the same high window sill as you would in an Aston Martin sports car. So it's gonna be really interesting. Once these start hitting the road, I'm gonna have to try to drive one of these because I wanna feel how it compares to one of the road cars versus their SUV. There are multiple train networks that work around Japan. In Tokyo, there are three primary ones, including the Tokyo Metro, which we're about to take. If you're taking any of them, you can use a Suica card or a PASMO card. They're interchangeable and they're to touch and go payment system. So when you go through these turnstiles, all you have to do is touch the card and keep walking. I'll show you how to use that right now. I'm about to check into my hotel that I'll be staying at for the last two nights of this trip. It's kind of a bittersweet moment because I absolutely love this hotel. It's the Hotel Ryumeken Ochimizu Hansen. And no, it's not behind me because I have to read the sign to say all that. Regardless, I love this place. This isn't sponsored, but I wanna give you an idea of what kind of range of hotels there are. This one in particular because it's traditionally styled. There's only nine rooms, and in this particular case, it's going to be beautiful. The hotel bathroom alone, the bathrooms in these rooms are just amazing. And I can't wait to show it to you. Let's go inside.
first things first is we have a full closet right here, which is huge by most hotel standards, let alone Japanese hotel standards. And we've got the sliding door, very much like a traditional Ryokan. Inside, carpeted uh, living room area, and then tatami mats on the bedroom side of things. And the reason I really booked this hotel, to be quite honest, is this bathroom. Um, this tub is my happy place. Look at this thing. It's handmade porcelain or stonework. And then I'm gonna have Evan come on in here and hopefully we can time this properly. You're gonna go in here and watch what happens with the magic room. That is a Japanese super toilet, as they're often known outside of Japan. Basically, this one is a top of the line model. The lid lifts up by motion activation. As soon as you walk into that room, lid lifts up, it sprays down a disinfectant that moistens the bowl so you don't leave any unsightly streaks. I don't know where I wanna go with that. But it is one of my favorite things about Japan. It's a weird thing to say, but once you get used to the, uh, the spray, anything less feels savage. My trip to Japan is coming to an end, and unfortunately, I have to go back to the real world. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and even more, I hope you'll try it for yourself. I'll be coming back to Japan next year for Tokyo Auto Salon, and I'll be back before then for a few other things as well. I'm looking forward to coming to Super GT races, I'll probably catch a game or two because I love baseball in Japan, and I've got a lot more exploring to do. I think next time I'll be driving a bit more, but either way, I'm gonna have a blast and I hope you will too. I wanna to say thank you to everybody that was a part of this trip. Evan, who's been behind the camera and lugging that camera around, he has been an absolute trooper dealing with all this. And all of my friends that came to visit and that I made along the way. If you wanna try some more of this for yourself, if you wanna read some more information about it, if you wanna check out some awesome pictures that Evan took, check out redpants.lol and unzipped.lol for more. See you next time.